Hi everyone, my name is Jamie, if you're new to my channel. This is kind of a new video, or not a new video, just a different video for my channel. I typically make makeup content, not the typical kind either, <laughs> just kind of like makeup panning. If you don't know what that is, like ways to use up your makeup and the panning community, that's a thing. Uh, we have like activities and kind of like games and different projects that we go through. So that's typically the content I make. So if you're interested in that, you're welcome to, um, you know, hang out and <laughs> check out my other videos. But um, the, the main purpose of this video is actually to talk about my jury duty experience. Um, I really want to make this video because jury anxiety is a very real thing. Uh, I was definitely looking up resources as I was getting ready for my jury duty. And um, I just didn't really find a ton out there, at least none that's like kind of up to date. And um, you know, there's some forums and things like that where people will discuss, but um, I just wanted to kind of come on here and um, just sit down and talk about it. So this is potentially kind of a longer video. Um, of course, jury duty is has kind of a spectrum of experiences. So um, really like don't take this as what is going to happen if you are going to be sitting on a jury. Um, this is also like in, this is my experience in my county and I know that across the entire United States, um, I can't speak to other countries, but I know especially across the different United States, across the entire United States, uh, with every different state, there's um, different rules and things like that for their jury as well. So, um, you know, this is my experience where I'm coming from. I would, I would expect it to be somewhat similar <laughs> um, for, for anybody who might be sitting on a jury in another state or another even county from me, but um, I just at least want to get on here and, and share my experience. So buckle up, we're going to get into it. Um, a few disclaimers first. Um, later on the video, I will talk a little bit about the case very briefly. Um, I'm here to mainly talk about the jury experience, not necessarily the case that I was listening to, um, but I might be mentioning things about like gun violence and um, some other kind of heavier things. And so I just want to put that out there. But the beginning will just be about like the selection process and stuff. So that won't, you know, really go into that. Um, but I do want to mention that up front. And um, other than that, let's go. So um, the if you're not aware, typically you get a summons. Um, mine just kind of came in a little postcard. And um, I didn't even realize until later, but mine actually said special summons. So there was like, I wasn't quite ready for what I was about to experience. But nonetheless, um, I got a special summons, which didn't look any different from any other summons. I had some other family members that got it this year as well. And um, they, it just kind of became a little postcard. I would definitely suggest taking a picture of it because I didn't, and then I think it got shuffled in with some other stuff. So I really relied on the system that they had online. Um, there was like a, um, there was like an online process where you kind of had to register and, um, and it gave you additional instructions. So that was really nice. It was nice to know that it was not just paper because I feel like the judicial system can sometimes be behind on things. A lot of systems are behind on the technology technological advances that we have but um yeah it was nice to know that they uh, made us register online there was also email communication and text communication as well as the date got closer so I didn't actually have to be that worried that I lost my summon slipped even though that was like technically I was supposed to bring it but um but yeah take pictures of any like paper documentation you get along the way um as long as they allow it and so I would definitely suggest that <laughs> so um for us, our county has like a call-in line um, for like, I think every judge or like, I don't know exactly how they do it, but there's some sort of hotline essentially. And like one of their staff leaves a message on there, which goodness, I appreciate their staff a lot. Um, but they leave like a message on there like the day before um, we were told like 4 p.m. the day before something like that. So they said to call the line um, and see if your number was picked. And so I did that, learned that my like range of numbers was picked and so um, I went in for what they called an orientation so orientation thankfully was pretty short it was about like two or three hours I think um uh for me I arrived at the courthouse there's security so prepare for that uh, I had to go through security usually I took my shoes off because I was wearing some sort of like dress shoe boot something so I ended up doing that you know it's just almost kind of like TSA they made me take a drink out of my water bottle um and i think they did that for any open like cup or bottle that came through they made everyone take a, a quick drink um 
I think anything closed was okay, but I mean, if you're only there for two or three hours, like I think just a water bottle's fine. So um, once I got through, got directions to my room, um, I will say like courthouses, at least the one I was in, was pretty stuffy. <laughs> like there was, uh, wasn't a lot of windows. Uh, it wasn't like nice and well decorated. It was kind of like, here's a room, you're gonna sit in here. Um, for us, I think I was like just like on a waiting chair um, kind of thing. They uh, There was a lot of waiting as you would expect for jury duty. Um, it wasn't terrible though. I think once they like got started, they had us watch like a video about some um, topics that was kind of just related to jury duty. And, um, and then they also had us fill out a pretty lengthy questionnaire. I, um, I've heard about, you know, other jurors just sitting around and waiting for to be interviewed individually but for us they actually like brought us through like a really large packet i would say at least nine to ten pages of questions um so it's pretty lengthy but I, like i appreciated that they were kind of more in depth that way they can kind of weed out anybody who um you know might not be a good fit to be a juror on this case um like early on rather than like later finding it out um so yeah once i finished that that was about two hours or so there was also like some delays with like the judge coming from another case and then we had like another judge like welcome us to the jury orientation like it was a thing they had they like i think they even like zoomed us in so we weren't even in the courtroom they just like video conferenced us into the courtroom where this alternate judge was sitting and introducing us so that was fine um they gave us like slight information about the case but they were very very strict about like until you are released um whether it be that you're not selected or that you were actually released from jury duty like don't look anything up about the case like that's super important um so i should have already I like didn't quite realize how serious the case was, but I should have noticed at that point like, oh, okay. Um, but I think that's just across the board about any case that you might be on. Um, but yeah, they told us that for sure. And so, um, so yeah, that was kind of hard, I would be honest, um, especially once I left the orientation and was like starting to get curious. But I am also terrible with names. So even though they gave us like a full list of the people involved with the case, um, I like, couldn't remember enough to, like to, to do that. I think I wrote down a few things, but I didn't really reference that either. Um, yes. And what was I about to mention? Oh yeah. So they did give us a full list of everybody involved in terms of like the defendant, their attorneys. Um, so the lawyers, um, the defendant is the one who's like guilty as charged. Um, of course the name of the judge and all the witnesses. Um, so, that we could review the list and like see if we knew anybody and thus like would be biased right bias meaning that you have like um you feel more opinion one way or the other um towards a situation because you might know someone or know something and so um so yeah so once i finished that questionnaire they just released us we were free to go we were given some um follow-up instructions about the callback process essentially and um that took about let's see that was end of that was that month and then it took about a month for them to um to start the the, the for, like the next step of the selection process i don't think it had anything to do with like like some of it might have been reviewing the paperwork and the questionnaires that we sent in but i think also just the timeline and how you know the court schedule works i think they needed about a month to get started so um it was kind of crazy because I went on a trip and literally I got back midnight on a Monday and then Tuesday I had to figure out if I was going into uh, back to the courthouse to to be to be selected or not. Um, so I was like in the airport, like calling this hotline, <laughs> um, trying to figure out if my number you're like assigned a juror number, right? I was trying to figure out if my juror number was on this list for this second step of the selection process and it was so crazy because like goodness the staff have to go through a lot of admin but for some reason they could not read the numbers <laughs> of the people they were calling back in um like numeric order so it was like juror number 210 juror number 10 juror number 342 like it was just I like could not follow it enough like I probably need to like sit down and like write out every number they were saying um but I didn't because I was walking through the airport trying to get home <laughs> but it ended up where I didn't quite hear my number that 
that first time I or like I listened through it twice even and I still like I couldn't quite remember my number I couldn't I didn't hear a number that was like that I recognized and so I was like I don't think I'm selected but we'll see and they also said that everyone should get like an email or text notification if you needed to come in and so I didn't get one that day either so I was like I don't know I don't think I am I moved on because I was like rushing home need to get back to my normal life and things like that it was just like all kind of crazy um I don't think that will be a typical experience but for me that was my crazy that I <laughs> I stepped into. Um, so then the next day I was actually at like a meeting and um, I got a text around like 1030 being like, so you need to come in for the afternoon selection process. So thankfully the, the next step wasn't all day either. It was like a morning session and an afternoon session just because they already like did so much work up front. So I think that's another great thing about this process I was a part of. Um, so I was like, oh goodness. So I need to like drop everything. And uh, thankfully I was able to work things out between my family and like could take care of the kids and all that stuff. So I'm um, really, really grateful for them. But I was able to get to the courthouse in the afternoon. Again, went through security, went to a different room, um, sat I think with about 15 or so other potential jurors. And um, we waited around a bit. Um, it, yeah, and then we ended up actually going into the courtroom of, of the judge that was um, presiding over this this case. Um, the attorneys were there, so the lawyers were there, as well as the defendant. Um, and they actually like brought us through kind of basically like a group interview. It was it was really interesting. I've never been part of a group interview. Um, so they went through, so for some questions they went through one by one, for some questions they went through kind of um, everybody and it looked to me as if they even had our questionnaires in front of them and the attorneys were part of this selection process for us so unfortunately it doesn't seem like at this point of the jury selection process that it is truly random sample of the population in terms of like age and experience um it seems like they were really i mean one of course they have to make sure that no one would uh be biased towards anything one or the other or like had previous experiences that would um kind of make sitting in on this case difficult um so I think that was mainly what they were making sure of but it did make me feel a little bit weird that even like the attorneys had a say in this and it wasn't like completely blinded in that sense right like they kind of knew who we were um like I even had one attorney look at me and say so you do this hobby and I was like whoa like yeah I wrote down the hobby because you asked that question but this is not related to the case at all. Like it was, I like I knew that they were trying to like make us comfortable or like make us, um, you know, kind of small talk type thing. But it also was like this is, this is clearly a very serious case. Like they're, I don't know. For me, it felt kind of weird. But also, <sighs> attorneys are real people too. As much as they're like, you know, we I I never watch the shows, but like I've seen bits and pieces, and I know some people are really into them. But like they're real people too. Um, and I guess they were just curious about it. So, anyways. Um, I think there were some interesting questions that were posed during that selection process because we were like in front of the actual attorney and judge and um, like we didn't hear that much more about the case. Um, a little bit was brought up and um, yeah, but I don't think it was enough for us to like really know what the case was about still. So, um, so yeah, I think that they, they kind of brought forward the exact charges I believe that they were, um, that the case was about but um but yeah again like not super anything revealing so then um I, so that part if in case you're curious i learned all these legal terms i think that part in terms of like speaking with potential jurors is called the voir dire am i saying that right i don't know maybe someone who's actually part of this is part who knows about this more um can tell me <laughs> but um but basically after that they i think oh like the announcement for the actual selected juries was pretty quick where it was, um, they had two days, maybe two and a half days, so because it was morning, afternoon, right? So they had like four sections of jurors come in, um, about 15 each, I would imagine. So they interviewed about 60 people. Um, and then I think by the second evening they already left another note on the hotline saying everybody's been selected um if you were selected you would have received a message about it and um at that point i hadn't because i i called in just to make sure like i wasn't selected i was like i didn't get a message 
I guess I didn't get selected. And then the next thing I know is I'm again in another um, meeting and I get a call being like, you've actually been selected. I got like an email confirmation as well. And I was like, oh boy. Um, so now I have to like, you know, make this work for my schedule. Like it didn't, it wasn't the best for my schedule, but I knew that I could make it work if I really pushed for it. So I started that process. I asked them how long it would take. Um, and they said about three days and I was like, wow, this that seems really short for a trial, but they were like, you think we can do it? So I was like, all right, like, if you think you can do it, I'll, I'll block out those three days for now. And then, uh, you know, from there, we'll see what happens. And so, um, so yeah, it was pretty crazy. I think at that point, that was where I got really nervous about the trial. Like I knew that this was a criminal trial and I knew that this was a very serious trial that there was going to be talk about gun violence, um, involved, um, I, uh, personally, I don't know if I would be able to sit on the trial if it was about other serious topics. Um, but for some reason for this one, this one seemed okay. Um, and I knew that it would be serious. I knew that there would be probably some rough things that we would be talking about. Like, I mean, being brought to court is, is every, like, it's always unfortunate to be brought to court, right? It's not fun. <laughs> so... I think that was, like, I already knew that was the reality. So, um, that was where I started to look at other people's experiences. And I think a lot of other people's experiences stopped at the, um, jury selection process. Um, but I haven't heard too much about, like, you know, details about all the way through, especially on kind of a, I wouldn't say this is the highest level trial, but it is higher and kind of pretty serious. And it's a multi-day trial. So, um, it's not just like, you know, just like a, a small case. And so, um, I wanted to at least share my experience in case anybody finds themselves in this position. <laughs> um, but basically, um, I, in summary, uh, the trial itself was really serious. My jury experience was I try to make things, I try to make little things kind of fun and comical. So if anything, it was a little comical. So as serious as this case is, uh, I would probably be kind of talking about the more funny things that happen throughout the jury process um, and just the jury experience. So let's get started. So the trial started about a week after I learned about my selection. Um, you know, I made sure to read through, thankfully online, they kind of had like dress code. They told us where to park. Um, I think they even told us where to park at like a, maybe at the orientation and stuff like that too. Um, so definitely make sure you give yourself some extra time because man, I am a tight scheduler and especially in the mornings when I have kids to take care of too and myself to take care of. Um, like this was a lot, especially I'm functionally a stay-at-home mom now even though I do like work a job kind of part-time um but it's not like I'm getting made up and do that like working mom life every day and this is what it felt like it was like this is my taste of being a working mom <laughs> needing to get to the courthouse by like 8 30 a.m um and so it was a rush so I definitely say like make sure you prepare yourself and like get things ready the night before if you can um make sure that you have things um I was I knew that we were able to bring in food and so I wasn't sure like how quote locked in we would be because I know for some high profile cases um like you're basically locked away like all day um locked away is probably not the right way to say this but you're basically asked to stay in the courthouse all day and not go back through security just in case you know like something happens right so um but yes they so I brought so I even packed lunch and some snacks and things like that um so make sure you make time for parking as well because for us at least it wasn't like you got to park right up at the courthouse like there's usually some sort of parking structure some kind of parking lot that you're asked to go to and there's like some walking involved and so you know make sure you're not wearing like the most difficult shoes to walk in for once for one if you're in the jury you're like sitting in a box in the jury box um more to say about that later but um basically you're sitting in a jury box and you just have like a short walk from like the jury room door to the jury box and so like no one can see your shoes like don't worry too much about it um it was also like raining a few days here too and so I ended up just like having like my rain shoes on so anyways all that to say wear like comfortable shoes wear clothes that are appropriate but not like you know not distracting um 
and then uh yeah just just prepare for anything honestly like i had my work laptop with me i had um, an extra charger with me i had a book with me um like anything that you need to pass the time so um so once i got myself there and i don't know i can't remember if i was even late a little bit on the first day or not i i was i think i was a little bit um, basically, um, yeah, join the other jurors that were in that room. Um, the basic structure of it, at least in my experience, was that they told us to get there about 15 to 30 minutes before, like, the court opened, essentially. Um, and, like, people were going to come in and get pre prepared and stuff like that. Um, but they wanted us in there because they didn't want us to, like, mingle with you know, the attorneys and other people and other people, like they didn't want us to be in that area with them. So we were always um, like asked to be in our room beforehand and then we were released after everyone had mostly gone on their way. So there is a lot of waiting because of that, like even for lunch breaks and stuff like that, like and, and when we went in and went out, like that was a big reason why we we're just waiting around a lot is because they didn't want us to be walking the halls and like we weren't even allowed to use the bathroom, the, the main bathrooms because they didn't want us to like be like in there awkwardly potentially listening to a conversation like we had bathrooms in the jury room so sorry i'm jumping ahead a little bit here so anyways i got to the jury room there was it was kind of small um there was like a big table right there was just about 14 chairs because they had 14 jurors um 12 jurors and then two alternates and then um they had bathrooms in there like i mentioned they had some it looked like there were some games and some activities because you know, there's been other jurors in that room in the past, so they kind of left some things there. Um, there's like a refrigerator and a microwave. Um, yeah, that was about it. So I met the other jurors. We all, um, we all seemed like really personal people. So like we even started with introductions with each other. It was kind of like self-facilitated. Um, we were joking around with each other and, um, we actually honestly ended up being a really, really good group of people to be with. Um, I think I'll share now that I ended up, uh, going to the courthouse for five and a half days. I'll explain that half in a minute, but, um, but yeah, I was basically with these people for five and a half days, a group of adults. I usually hang out with my kids. So it's like a group of adults was really, really, really nice. And that the fact that this was actually a nice group of people to hang out with, we ended up bringing snacks for each other. We ended up bringing puzzles for each other and activities for each other. Um, it wasn't like a dance party, but anyways, by any means, but like we went out for lunch together. Um, I didn't always join them, but it seemed like there was always a group that was that was going um, out for lunch. And so I think it just, in general, it, it, was, it was really nice that I got to be part of a good group of people. I can't always say that's gonna be the case, right? But I think, I feel especially lucky for such a serious case to have a group, good group of people to have gone through it with. Um, and so, yeah, we would, you know, make small talk with each other. Um, so I ended up that court would open, they would do other preparations um in in the court while we were waiting and then from there at around we were often we were called in they like lined us up um it was one through 14 and we had to stay in that order because once um they really wanted to be able to identify us i think by like the number we were in and not just like mixed around and stuff like that so i ended up being juror lucky juror number 14. <laughs> So I was last in line to file into the courtroom um, once we, they were ready to get started and things like that. Um, funny enough, I was uh, the only juror that did not fit into the jury box. So I was asked, so they had like a waiting room chair for me and um, and they asked me to move that um, up to the jury box and then away from the jury box every time I had to leave. So <laughs> it was kind of funny. It was like me walking in, the last one, picking up my chair, moving it putting it down and then finally sitting down and I tried to make it as quick as possible just like not make things awkward but it was to me it was kind of funny that I was put in that position um because for some reason they could only fit 13 out of 14 juror chairs into the jury box so um all that to say it was kind of funny the way the that first courtroom was set up we were actually in two courtrooms because it was a weird situation but basically we had to be in two different ones Basically, the first courtroom we were in, I was directly in line with the witness who was like three feet away from me, it felt like, and then the judge who was sitting above um, them and then everyone to my right was like the rest of the jury and then, um, you know, like the attorneys and, and the other people who are watching the case. 
So it's definitely really interesting being right in line with the witness. Like I could see them sitting there and some of their mannerisms and stuff like that. But I think if anything, I hope that I was like, I don't know, like I felt like I was the closest one sitting to them. And if anything, I hope that I was like a nice person to be sitting kind of close to in the courtroom because it's like some people were testifying to some really, really difficult things. And so um, like, I don't know, sometimes I like to think that I can be, I seem like a nice person. So um, if anything, I'm like, maybe I was put in that position for some reason. I do ultimately know what my reason was for being in that position, but <laughs> like, you know, so anyways, um, so yeah, so they would, there would be like, the judge would introduce the case and then um, the attorneys would bring up their witnesses. I think first it was the, um, I'm already losing all my, all my words, the prosecutor side. And so the people who were trying to charge the defendant or like the person who committed the crime as guilty. Um, and then the attorney who was defending the person who was being charged as guilty is the criminal defense attorney. Um, but all that to say, the prosecutor side was, ended up being the state this time around, and it isn't always the case, but um, the state had brought forward all of their witnesses. And um, it was definitely interesting that the attorneys had some interesting personalities. Um, I wouldn't say that they got along all that well. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I, I think that it was, you could sense that it was tense in the courtroom. Um, later on, I would learn that this case had also been going on for quite a while and that there was a series of um, other situations that came up um, that we didn't know about as jurors. We came into this case blind, but if it, like now I understand why it seemed like everybody had some sort of familiarity with this case because it just been going on for such a long time. And so, um, but yeah, we were just thrown in, right, right into it. Um, so basically for the jury, uh, we listen to whatever they present to us. We couldn't ask questions. We couldn't even talk with each other um, about it when we were in the jury room. We really had to kind of keep to ourselves until all the evidence was presented. Um, honestly, from time to time, I would just say things about my jury experience, like being the 14th juror that has to drag my chair back and forth, um, or just like, you know, quip about like little things um, about the uh, about like what happened. But we did our best really to to not say anything about the trial that was going on, or at least comment or make opinions about it. Because us as jurors, we were responsible for only making um, decisions when all the evidence that the attorneys or the lawyers wanted to present to us was done. But that took a lot, a long time, a lot of time. So unfortunately, it was like a lot of just um, a lot of emotions that we would feel and a lot of opinions that we would feel. But um, but yeah, in the courtroom, we were given a notebook, and um, I was just writing as much as I can. I'm the type of person who focuses better if I'm writing, and so I was just writing a lot. Um, for other jurors, it might not be the case, but for me, at least that was what they're what that case was, but they supply a notebook for me and a pen. They didn't want us to be bringing our own notebooks, um, which makes sense. And so that was that. And then um, from time to time, as the lawyers are making their case, as the attorneys are making their case, um, if the other side has any like concern, um, you know, that's where they would pull out the words like objection, your honor, um, or like hearsay and like, you know, all these terms that you typically hear. And we heard a lot of that. Um, so sometimes a judge would say like, you know, overruled or sustained, um, whether it be that, you know, the objection is valid or overruled being that the objection is, is not, doesn't seem valid and, you know, that they can continue. Sorry if this makes no sense. Uh, I'm just kind of spewing words at this point. But um, sometimes if a lawyer would say this is a matter for the court, that means that they, like the the lawyers, the attorneys want to talk with the judge about what's going on and like figure out if there's enough, uh, if it's valid enough to continue with the argument that they were trying to make or whatever they were trying to present. So then the judge would tell us, jurors, please put your notebooks down um, and return to your jury room. We'll call you right back. So that's where you have to go back and forth and back and forth. And um, our judge was really good about making sure to have a morning break 
I mean, we took a lot of breaks, but they needed a break. So they took one, I think, usually between 10 and 11. And then the lunch break started as promptly or as close to noon as possible. And that was for about an hour, um, at least for the jurors. And then we were told to go back. And then we had to wait around some more because everybody else had to file into the courtroom before we could go in, all that stuff. So, um, and then the day would wrap up um, around between 4.30 and 5, usually. Um, they did their best to wrap up by five, even if it was mid witness, they would say, um, all right, let's wrap up for this witness for today. Let's, uh, let's move it into tomorrow. Um, some of the witnesses were split up between days, even like they were brought back. Um, and unfortunately the case went on, like it took so long to present evidence for this case that some witnesses even had to, it seemed like as if some witnesses even had to wait, um, you know, quite a while to be brought in like more than they expected or were told and um you know because it went beyond the original three days that they were told and it went into like five six days um so that was definitely a lot like we went through a lot of witnesses um some were short some were longer some had you know physical evidence that that was also presented with them or even video um, a big part of this case um, because they were there were some younger people involved with this case not like young to be a minor but like younger adult um, that there was a lot of like social media involved so we were given like social media quotes from Instagram and um, looked at pictures as evidence through that was taken from Instagram and from phones um, there was a lot of like Gen Z lingo that was defined in the courtroom so um, you know, I have my two cents about like, you know, we have older attorneys and people on, in the juror box uh, trying to um, make sense of all this that happened in, in this younger generation too, right? Like, that's a whole other conversation we could have, but it was definitely an interesting dynamic, I think, and made this case um, that much more difficult in, in a sense. Um, so definitely made me realize that everything that is being said online now everything that you know you can just talk about in a video like I am right um like all that can be taken as evidence like very seriously no matter how like lighthearted it was or just like in the moment it was like it it definitely made me realize like all those things can be taken um and seized as evidence and it's it's something that we should honestly be much more careful about and I think that it makes me more aware and really wanting to educate like the younger people in my life including my kids that they need to be careful about what goes online not only because of who might be out there but also what it can be used for right like this um and so anyways let us keep going I have some notes down here so that's why I'm looking down um all right so there like i mentioned there was um 14 jurors that was sitting through the case and um uh, it turned out that i was one of the alternates um i learned that different states do it differently so for us it was uh since there was 14 jurors in the lineup the last two were marked as the alternates um and it was funny because they actually seated all the women together and then all the men together which I don't know if that was intentional or not. Um, I, maybe for a safety thing, but it was definitely interesting that all the women, and then it was like me at the very end, right? <laughs> Outside of the jury box, <laughs> sitting in my own chair, moving it back and forth. Um, and yeah, so I, I learned that, I think about halfway through that I was the alternate. So that kind of shifted, I think, um, my mind a bit about how... I was approaching the case and honestly by like day four I was a little bit checked out <laughs> like after learning that I was an alternate I was like I don't really know if I need to be I don't really know if I need to be here because I might not even be part of deliberations which deliberations is where um 12 jurors will after the evidence is all given that they will um basically are in their juror room like trying to figure out um if the if the defendant is actually guilty of the charges so I was like I don't even know if I'm part of deliberation so like I checked out a bit to be honest but I knew that it was really really important for me to still be there because um you know if I need to step in for some reason that I needed to have like heard the whole trial right so um so yeah so I stuck I stuck with it thankfully it wasn't too many more days but it was definitely starting to get a little difficult especially on my personal life 
Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was kind of crazy being an alternate, I think, especially by the end, like knowing that I was still, while I was excused, like I wasn't completely released from the trial yet, um, that I still basically had like a gag order, like I couldn't talk about it until it was, until he had a verdict. Um, so that's why I'm like, still trying to process a lot of it now because it's kind of fresh like the verdict just recently came out um which i'm not going to talk about because i don't think that's relevant to what the points i want to make in this video um but essentially like just waiting at home like knowing that the other jurors were deliberating like they were really locked in at this point like they couldn't leave and they were they were given lunch thankfully but it was like totally on them to figure out like how to do it so um i'm not so unfortunately i cannot talk about how like a deliberation works in terms, I don't think there's any set way. I think they're just given like, here's the evidence. Um, and I think they were able to take all the evidence. Um, the jurors had access to all the evidence um, that was given both physical and all printouts of like, you know, Instagram messages or whatever, so other social media we were presented with. Um, but yeah, so I can't speak to that, unfortunately, but I know that just using that, they just kind of had to work together to come to a, a verdict in, in that sense. Um, so yeah, so I, that mostly wraps up, I think, like, most of the juror experience. Um, just kind of, I just have a few notes here about some random stuff, like if you have questions and stuff about, like, can you bring your work? Like I mentioned, I brought my work laptop and I was able to do some work, but honestly, um, I did a lot of it, like, if I had to, like, really sit down and focus on a task, like, I mainly did that during lunch. Uh, which is why I brought my lunch a few of the days. Um, and then otherwise, like, the the breaks you never quite know are how long. And then, you know, like, if, if there was some matter in the court that they had to discuss, like, you never knew how long it would take before you were called back. So I felt like I never had quite enough time. Or, like, I just felt kind of so uneasy with really focusing on a work task. So that was nice that like I brought something for myself to do and also like the other jurors were working on puzzles or like doing activity books and stuff like that. So like while it was kept pretty quiet in the room and sometimes we would joke or whatever. Um, but yeah, I felt like everyone kind of had that same feeling of like we just need to ha do something that's kind of short and light um, but not like a full on like heavy duty task, right? So. So I definitely like keep that in mind if you were thinking of bringing work stuff um, to to the jury room. Um, I mean, they gave us access to like Wi-Fi and stuff like that. So it wasn't like I, we, I couldn't be on my phone either or like whatever. But I think um, we were, there was science plastered everywhere. And we were told every day, uh, you know, make sure you don't look anything up and make sure you don't, um, you know, talk about it outside of. Uh, or even talk about it at all with friends, family, other jurors, even until all, all the evidence is done and, um, you know, a verdict has been reached. So, um, so yeah, in terms of processing through the day, cause, because it was such a heavy case, um, I think especially after the first day, because there was some like pretty like heavy evidence that was presented to us, not heavy as in terms of like weighty, but like it just it was just emotionally and like mentally taxing to like first being in like a whole new environment, but also to look at that, the first few things of evidence that they showed us, it was a lot. Um, like having flashbacks as, as I like talk about it. Um, and I sat in my car and ranted to a pigeon that was across the street, you know, <laughs> like, I, like I did my best to find an outlet. Like there isn't that there's no outlets, but, um, like find one that is within the appropriate you know um rules uh, for me it was ranting in my car to a pigeon <laughs> just saying things out loud i know that i knew that that helped me so i definitely want to mention that um i know that um yeah i'm, I'm sure there's like I'm sure writing with pen and paper might be okay, but you, you of course have to be very careful that that's kept secured and that you're more ranting about maybe things that aren't descriptive of the case, um, you know, if you do that. So I don't know, all to say like, definitely find outlets for yourself because if you just keep it all in, especially for a case that is potentially like pretty heavy and um has a lot of consequences and that you might be reactive to like just yeah just have a way to, to get that out because 
um it is a very very taxing process like all of us all of us jurors would say like we're so tired every single we're literally just sitting there listening to evidence and listening to people but we're just so exhausted because we're dragged through this system that we're so unfamiliar with and um and we're just we're not sure what's being thrown at us every single day and so it's just it's just so tiring to be honest um but you know definitely take care of yourself outside of the court room in the courthouse as well like if there's um you know things you can be doing like the self-care that you can be doing you know doing your regular as much regular stuff as you can in terms of um you know working out feeding yourself right uh, thankfully i have my kids to come home to and they're always really fun so uh I, the first day i came home to like a dance party you know <laughs> like it was just like i was really grateful for those moments um especially having to sit through such like a serious case um and uh and yeah i i i think as i think from my standpoint as well so um i said before on my channel but if you're new um i'm i'm a christian and i like going into the case i really was praying over like first one of my why am i selected for this there was no reason for me to be selected for this necessarily right i'm like i'm not really sure why i was selected for this and also as a christian like it's hard to realize like I potentially will have to judge someone when as a Christian like I'm told in the Bible not to judge anybody right um but I think it, it is a little different like I actually when I first started I wasn't even aware I was the alternate so as I was praying through these things I I knew that I still had to follow the law um but that ultimately I wasn't judging for consequences I was judging that moment of the incident right of like what happened and the, with the evidence that they would give us and so I had to be as objective as possible. But I knew that the consequence and what happened afterwards wasn't in my hands. For one, it wasn't, it was the judge who was going to do the sentencing. But also that I really had to give it to the Lord that he was going to take care of whatever happened, right? Hopefully for good and positive changes for everyone who was involved in this case. And I still continue to pray that because I think that um, with, with the verdict and the sentencing, uh, it's still not ideal for everybody. And so I'm just praying that everybody involved, um, can still walk away with this and like, hopefully get the closure that they need, you know, from this, from this. And so, um, anyways, all that to say, like, if you are a Christian going into this process, um, definitely be prayerful, definitely be, um, I think open to what could potentially happen. I think if anything that as Christians, like, and I really as anybody, I hope, but especially as Christians, knowing that we have, you know, the Lord's light and, <laughs> um, and joy and like, yeah, I think like all, all the amazing things that the Lord can put in us that we can at least be an encouragement through this process, this very serious process, right? Um, whether it be like the, the other jurors that I met, I hope that I at least didn't make the didn't make the experience any worse <laughs> to say the very least um but yeah but i think just be an encouragement through it i i think um I, I did find opportunities to talk with other jurors about my faith as well and we shared we actually did share faith and um and even just be open and with people about like you know other areas of my life too not like going super deep into it but like willing to have conversations and seeing where that leads and so honestly overall I'm very grateful for this experience I'm very grateful that um things in my personal life could line up in a way um where it allowed me to serve in this way um yeah and even that I, I i learned a lot through the case i learned a lot through sitting in on the thing they brought in a lot of experts so i was able to learn about dna and forensics and um like i mentioned at the very beginning that this was a, a, this case was related to gun violence so we learned about how firearms worked um and and just overall how the court system works as well and that it's not perfect by any means it's not it's not bad it's not good it's it's rules made by people who are doing their best and like that's what I could tell um and you know in, in some sometimes I felt like oh man this just seems like a game <laughs> like it just seems like there's just been a lot of back and forth and that some things are shown to us some things are not shown to us um and we'll never get the full picture to be honest 
um, we'll never know really what happened and truly if the verdict was, was, you know, true to the incident that actually happened. Like, we'll never know. Um, but just do the best with, with what we had. And, um, and I had, to, especially with some of the very difficult personalities in the courtroom, like I felt myself praying like during the case while, while evidence was being presented, I was like, Ooh, like I, I really need some grace for this person because it's getting kind of rough. Um, but I think all that to say, like it, it was a good experience overall, I would say. And I'm very, again, I'm very grateful for a good group of jurors that I was part of. Um, I think that made the experience that much better. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's all I really have to say. I'm sure once I wrap up this video, I'm going to be like, I wish I talked about this, this, and this. But I think that's essentially the gist of what I wanted to come on here and, and talk about was, for one, um, if you are selected as a juror of... A, whether it be a low level case or a high level case like um I hope that you're not necessarily that afraid of it and that what what I talked through just now kind of hopefully will ease your mind a bit about what to experience and what you can expect again not saying that this is everything applies to your experience and especially in terms of what they allow you to do or not allow you to do um but I think it's just one of those things where um, you're kind of at the mercy of the system and, um, and to, you know, be as prepared as you can be, but also be open to, to what's happening. Um, so yeah, I think all in all, I don't know if I'd want to be the 14th juror again. <laughs> It'd be rough if I was an alternate again, just because I also felt like I sat through this whole thing. I want to be part of it through the end, but at the same time, like I, I knew I had a place, like there was a purpose for why they have alternates and I'm not really sure why I was chosen as an alternate. I think I might have been the youngest juror um, and I think I might have noticed that it was the oldest and the youngest juror that were alternates. So I don't know if it was like an age thing, not seeing like ageism is part of it, but like maybe they just, that was how they chose it. Um, I know not everything is really thought through, especially on the juror side. Like we definitely sat in that room sometimes and was like, the staff and the judge don't sit in here, do they? Because it's really stuffy it's pretty rough like it's not like a nice waiting room by any means but all that to say um yeah i think that's pretty much all i wanted to go through today um if you have any experiences or have any questions comments like feel free to leave them below um i'm hoping i'll be off the hook for a few years uh we'll see what happens but um all in all it's kind of one of those things where it's like this was a good experience i'm ready to get back to my real life now so get back to that now. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, and if you are here for my makeup stuff, I'll be posting another like makeup panning video very soon. So hopefully I'll see you then. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.